Hello. Welcome to the video. Uh, in this section, we're looking at 2.6, where we are proving geometric relationships. So the essential question um, that was asked is, can you use a flow chart to prove a mathematical statement? The answer is yes. In fact, there are basically three different ways that you can um, define a proof. The first one, which is the most common way, is the two-column proof where you give reasons and statements. Uh, the second way is the flow chart. And then um, the, third, the third way is uh, a paragraph proof. Now, for the most part, I believe that Writing a two-column proof is probably going to be the most common way that you're going to show a math, uh, show or how to prove a mathematical statement. Um, we will kind of touch on the flowchart and paragraph one. We'll kind of show you examples, but uh, for the most part, in not only this lesson but in lessons um, in the future, uh, we're more or less going to use two-column proofs to show these proofs. Uh, we have a theorem in this uh, particular section that is going to be um, useful, and it is uh, Theorem 2.3, where it's, it's the right angle congruency theorem, and all it states that all right angles are congruent. So in this one here, this is an example of a flowchart proof um, from basically kind of like how a two column proof is written. So here they're saying that angle one and angle two are right angles. We have to prove that angle one is congruent to angle two. So the flow chart is you kind of write like these little bubbles or boxes and then below the statement, you're gonna write your reason. So angle one, angle two are right angles, that's given. Then you could say that the measurement of angle one is equal to to 90 degrees, the measurement of angle two is equal to 90 degrees. That comes from the definition of right angles. And then here we have the measurement of angle one is equal to the measurement of angle two from the transitive property because they're both 90 degrees. That means we can make them equal to each other. And then finally, we can say that angle one and angle two are congruent due to the definition of congruent angles. So look at here, they're asking us to copy and complete the flow chart. So they give us some values, they give us some statements, they give us some reasons, we have to kind of fill in the rest. So the first part here is given AB is perpendicular to BC and BC is perpendicular to BC. So that's given. The next part of the flow chart is, comes from the definition of perpendicular lines. So anytime, so if you looked in the definition of perpendicular lines, uh, you are looking at angles to be right angles. So we can say that angle B and angle C are right angles because that's what the definition of perpendicular lines are. And then here we, we can write in angle B is congruent to angle C from our new uh, theorem, which is the right angles theorem. Right angles congruency theorem. Uh, here are a couple more uh, theorems um, that we're going to be looking at and hopefully useful. One is uh, a congruent supplements theorem, and we have a congruent complements theorem. Basically, if you recall, anything that's supplement, it's something that adds to 180 degrees. And complement is where they add up to 90 degrees. So in this situation, it says use the two column proof to, uh, to write a flow chart proof that proves that two angles supplementary and the same angle is congruent. Let's just um, 
So basically what, what they're asking you to do is this. And in fact, just let's just concentrate on this two column proof and kind of go from there. Flow chart is that we would simply just be copying things down with bubbles. So here they're saying that angle one and angle two are supplementary and angle three and angle two are supplementary. All right, so that's given. What's going to help us with step two is because they're supplementary, we know they add up to 180 degrees. So we're taking the measurement of one and plus two equals 180, and the measurement of three plus two is 180 as well. For part three, since we, we realize that they both are 180, we just set the two um, things that are equal to 180 equal to each other. That comes from the transitive property. One and three are equal because you can subtract angle two together. That's where the subtraction property comes in. And then we can realize that they are, in fact, congruent because the definition of congruent angles. All right. Uh, if you wanted to write those into the flow chart, you know, that's fine. But again, I'm more interested in, in two column proofs. But, uh, you know, if you are interested in more writing what that flow chart is, um, I'm more than happy to do so. It's basically just copying things down from this here. We have, uh, we talked about this a little bit with about linear pair. We have a linear pair postulate, basically saying if we have a linear pair, those two um, angles are supplementary. And we have vertical angles. These vertical angles show that not only are they vertical angles, but they're also going to be congruent angles as well. So two and four and one and three. Okay, so why is that useful? So if we look at um, at this particular question, it says use the given paragraph proof to write a two column proof of the vertical angles congruency theorem. Here it says that angles five and angle seven are vertical angles, and they want you to prove that angle five is congruent to angle seven. So here it says angle five and angle seven are vertical angles by intersecting lines as shown in the diagram. Angle five and angle six are a linear pair, and angle six and angle seven are a linear pair. That is by the linear pair postulate. Five and six are supplementary, six and seven are supplementary. So by the congruency theorem, five is congruent to seven, okay? So if we wanted to write that out as like a two column, so I got my statement, and I have my reason. So part one is going to be what's given, angle five and angle seven are vertical angles. And that's given. Two. What they wrote down is angles five and six, linear pair. And the reason is linear pair postulate. You can also, actually, you can also put six and seven linear pair as well. We'll just keep that in the step two because it's the same reason. Step three, they can say that five and six are supplementary. six and seven are supplementary. And the reason for that would be uh, definition of linear pair. And then the final thing Step four, we can then say that angle five is congruent to angle seven because of the congruent 
supplement serum. All right. So in this one here, it has uh, two column proof. Let's just keep it the two column proof and fill it in where we need to fill it in. So here it says that AB is equal to DE and BC is equal to CD. That's given. The second part is AB plus BC is equal to BC plus DE. That is, uh, they say the addition property of equality. So what they did was is they simply added BC to both sides. All right. Where that comes into play here is we have the substitution property. So we have the luxury of looking at statements two and statements um, Statements two and statements four to kind of help us out to kind of give an idea of what we are trying to look for. So, what we can say is this. So we're just substituting. So I would. So we got a plus b, which is right here, and that equals a c and CD plus DE equals CE. That's from uh, segment addition. So what we got to do is use so A, B, A, B plus B, C is equal to B, C plus D, E. And we can say that probably AB plus BC is equal to CD plus DE. So all I did was, oh, we said that this changed because of substitution. Yeah. And then part, part four comes from segment addition. And what can we use part four and part five? So that comes from substitution. So basically what we're going to do is say, probably AC is equal to CE because you just substituted those values in from the first looking at step three because A, B, B, C is CD. And then CD and DE is EC. Well, we know that they are equal to each other, so we just substituted that in, and then finally, we can say they're congruent because of the definition of congruent segments. Like I said, even, um, you know, a lot of proofs and stuff like that, again, it takes a lot of practice, and, and sometimes with these proofs that have uh, different steps that they give you, it's a lot of it is trying to be able to look at the previous statement and the statement moving forward to kind of help you um, come up with those additional statements.
here they want you to find the value of x. So what we know is 148 degrees and 3x plus 1, those are two vertical angles. So because they're vertical angles, they're equal to each other. So I can just take 3x plus 1 and equal to 148. Subtract 1 to both sides, so I got 3x is equal to 146. 146 divided by 3. I'm sorry, this was 147. I don't know why I wrote that. <laughs> sorry, even I said that. It's 147. So 147 divided by 3. X is 49. Just by so to find the value of X. We're good to go there. Here it says use the diagram of the given angle to find the measurement of the other one. So if they're telling you that this is... 117 degrees, you have to find 2, angle 3, and angle 4. Well, 1 and 3 are going to be the same because they're vertical angles. So this is 117. And 2 and 4 is simply going to be 180 subtracted by 117. And that gives me 63 degrees. Okay, looking at number 5. Angle 2 is 59, so we need angle 1, angle 3, and angle 4. Well, 2 and 4 are the same, so this is 59 degrees. And 1 and 3 are simply going to be 180 minus 59, which is 121 degrees. So that's how you solve those. So it says here, uh, write a paragraph proof. Like, um, so what I'm going to do is let's just do, let's just do a, a two column, keep it consistent. So they're saying that one is congruent to four because it's given. So I'm just going to put 1 and 4 are congruent. I'll just put a little hash marks there to kind of help us out. The next thing that we can say is angle 1 is congruent to angle 2. And we can also say that angle 3 is congruent to angle 4. Reason for that is we can say that they're vertical angles theorem. Okay. Because um, we got one and two, we got three and four. So actually, what we can do is this: is I can say like angle one is congruent to angle two, and I can also say that. Now angle three is congruent to angle one. And I just substitution. And why is that important? Well, they have, we have one and one here. So now final step is angle three is congruent to angle four. Or, sorry. Angle 2 is congruent to angle 3 because of the transitive property. Because they share 1s here, and then 2 and 3 would be equal then. And that is being able to prove uh, geometric relationships. Hope this helps. Until next time.